All right. I'm uh, hello, everybody. I'm Marissa Elkins. Um, I'm a city councilor at large, one of the co-sponsors of the resolution to um, to start this commission. I'm going to um, chair the meeting um, for the moment um, until we um, until we uh, get far enough along the agenda to start um, talking about um, uh, uh, picking a, a chair, which by the provisions we laid out, um, we have suggested that not be a counselor. So uh, we're asking that it be um, some somebody else. Um, we're supposed to pick the chair at the first meeting according to the administrative um, uh, certain rules about these things. When we get to that point at the agenda, though, we maybe we'll talk given th that we are at a little less than desirable turnout. Um, but um, but also we don't want to uh, we don't we can't put it off. Uh, we, it is something we got to get done. Um, I have already said too much before I did a thing that I need to do, which is that we should um, call the roll. Um, I will take normally we. Derek, I'm gonna let you call the roll. Do you have the list? I don't have the list. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find. Here, I think I have it. Okay. We are very dependent on our very, very faithful and uh, uh, and uh, excellent council administrator, Laura, who is not here tonight and won't be our administrator um, going forward, but. Um, oh, okay. Usman said he was uh, going to... Um, all right. Um, so we're just going to call the roll. Um, Marsha Morris. Here. Um, I don't actually, sorry. Hang on just a second. Uh, Bill Newman. Here. <laughs> Rachel Montgomery. Oh, I thought she was here. Thought we had. Oh no, we have Rachel Naisman. Um, Felicia uh, Lundquist. Present. Uh, I am here, Councillor Elkins. Um, Rachel Naismith. Here. Garrick Perry. Here. Alton McRae. It's not here. Usmain said he's. Uh, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing. He's coming. Um, and um, I apologize, uh, Paquette, first name, I don't have the, I don't have, I have email addresses. Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy. Huh? Jeremy Paquette, sorry, yes. And I said Sarah Patterson already, right? Sarah Patterson. Here. <laughs> and, and did I call everybody who's here? Uh, I don't know if you're good at this, but at least I don't know how to start a meeting before we've had all the things uh, put in place <laughs> to be started. So, um, okay, so um, I just want to cover a couple of things. So next on the agenda is public comment. There is not anybody else present um, for public comment, which we, as a general rule, start all committee and commission <clears throat> meetings with in Northampton. Um, I would note, um, and I would suggest this goes for commission members too, that um, it, per open meeting laws, um, per open meeting laws that uh, we uh, need to not chat. Um, things in the chat um, don't get make its way into, the, it's okay, Felicia. Um, uh, things, those don't, things, things don't make it into the record for the purposes of open meeting law. And so we limit um, chat um, participation to just letting us know about technical difficulties. Okay, that is a um, that is a thing that we um, explain when there's public comment, but there's nobody else to to hear from tonight, um, which is good. It means we can get on with our our business. Um, all right, let's. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, so on our agenda, we have calling the meeting to order. And, and the discussion of the committee purposes and objectives. I'd actually like to move that down um, on the agenda to um, uh, uh, a little bit later so that attorney Seawald who's here can speak. Um, but I will start quickly. Um, if we can uh, just 
go around and, and have introductions. Um, everybody, if you can just say a little bit about yourself and, and why you're here. A um, couple of us had the benefit of hearing from many of you in the interview process. Um, no need to go on too long. We're going to have plenty of time over the course of this this project to talk. But um, you know, let's let's hear from everybody who's here right now. Um, I'll start with Sarah Patterson. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Patterson. I'm an assistant professor of English at the University of Massachusetts. I was in a member. I was a member of the uh, Northampton Reparations Committee that advocated for this commission, and I am excited to be uh, a participant in. Uh, the research and, and the dialogue, the public dialogue that we have. Uh, Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Morris, and I'm a resident of Northampton. Um, I'm currently uh, in a retirement mode, but because uh, I was hurt on the job. And um, I'm a former business consultant. Um, I owned my own practice for about 23 years and uh, worked in a variety of fields. I have been to Africa, it was one of my dream trips uh, to do uh, Ghana and Senegal, to do that triangle. And so I, I, I'm very familiar with the uh, issues going on um, around the history of slavery. Um, and by chance, I am also chairing a, a group in my church, college church, uh, Slavery and Christianity. And we've done some historical um, things with the historic Northampton and Forbes. Thank you. And I'm very excited to be here. Great. Um, Felicia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Felicia Lundquist. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am a resident of Northampton, also have been in higher ed for the last 21 years um, as uh, serving in admin positions um, like the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to adjunct faculty. I just shifted a year ago into serving for an organization called Think Again Training and Consulting. Um, where we do and center our commitment around social change and leadership consulting and training. Um, and for me, it's about accountability. Um, it's an interest. And also uh, for me, it's as an individual who lives and shares experiences with black and brown folks and a person in this area and neighborhood, I feel it's my duty and commitment to be accountable as well and to step up in these different ways uh, in terms of leadership. And that's why I'm here. Great. Um... I, I don't want to mispronounce it, but uh, Usmani? Us that was pretty close. Usman. Hey, Usman. everybody. Okay. Sorry for being late. I had to pick up my daughter. A little miscommunication on the pickup. Um, but um, I missed everyone's names. Um, but hello, everybody. Uh, Usman Power Green. I've been in Northampton since 97. Um, and I teach at Clark University. And I've, I am on the volunteer board at David Ruggles Center. Uh, among other things. So yeah, great to meet everybody, even though I haven't technically met you all because I only heard Felicia's, but anyway. Uh, Bill. Hi, I'm Bill Newman. I'm not a non and I will fix that. Um, uh, I've lived in Northampton since 1976 or seven. And I've been the director of the Western Massachusetts Office of the ACLU now with the title supervising attorney for Western Massachusetts. Uh, since then, uh, I also have a radio show and I am the person who writes and records the Civil Liberties Minute. Uh, I am really excited to be on this commission. I approach this work with an absolutely open mind to what the answer is, what the project should be, what we should come up with. I, uh, really excited to hear from the community and to hear from all of you. Um, Rachel. Hi. Um, I am a resident. I've been here for a couple of decades. Moved here from inner city, Kansas City, and before that, uh, Pittsburgh. And um, let's see. I am a retired reference librarian. I worked at Springfield College. And I've also worked a little bit at Forbes Library here in town. 
and at Lilly Library. And I'm excited to research, learn, put things together, consider, and listen. Excellent. And Garrett? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> Garrick? Yeah, that's me. I'm Garrick Perry. Uh, my friends call me Force. I am the current Ward 4 City Councilor. Uh, I was one of the three who put forward the resolution that got us here. Um, and I am really excited and thankful for all of you guys for both uh, applying to be a part of this and for your commitment to the, the very important work that I think we're going to do. So um, salute to you all. Thank you. And um, I'm Marissa Elkins. I'm uh, also city councilor, city councilor at large, and one of the co-sponsors of the resolution. Um, I'm originally from Texas uh, and uh, specifically Houston. I've uh, been here uh, for about 20 years. Um, been very, very happy to move um, behind the tofu curtain, but uh, it is um, different from the very big, diverse, uh, city that I came from, um, but also come that place comes with some problems. Um, and I, uh, I am a criminal defense attorney. I'm also uh, uh, a big history nerd uh, and, and really uh, I'm just very moved and curious um, about the city's history and, and, and and this project that we're on and, and what it looks like. And I'm so excited that we've engaged some folks who haven't had the, you know, haven't felt the thing that called them to step forward um, for this kind of service. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Um, and so um, that's everybody that's here. Um, there's a, a few folks who are uh, not present that we didn't hear from, um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. And what we'll do is um, um, is reach out to those folks to make sure that they know the the schedule going forward. Uh, yep, yeah, Felicia. I do apologize. My job, I'm training at 5.30 and doing the training. So I actually have to leave. And so I don't know if you'll have quorum or not. I apologize in advance. And I did put that in the chat, but since we're not using chat, I'm just saying it out loud um, because I will have to leave right at 5.30. Uh, I think we will still have a quorum um, with that. But what I will do, especially in light of that, is uh, we will cut the chit chat for the moment. Um, and since we have attorney Seawald here, our city solicitor, um, he has some really bad news for y'all. He, <laughs> no, he's just, no, he's going to go over open meeting law and some of the things that we need to know uh, about why it's a little more complicated to talk in this forum, but what we need to know to make sure we get it done. Good evening. Um, I'm Alan Seawald. I'm the city solicitor. I've been solicitor for the last 12 years. And um, you know, I, I, I make it a, a point to visit with particularly ad hoc committees like this when they first get started. And, um, you know, I'm it's unfortunate that, you know, we don't we don't have more of the committee here, but um, I'm always available if somebody has a question. But I always make it a point to come and just talk about what the requirements are for serving in a public context, because I know a lot of people come from you know, a private nonprofit context or other contexts where they've served, uh, but it's a little different in, in the public context. And I just want to sort of give you some of the just broad ground rules. Okay? So the first thing that applies to you that you need to think about is the open meeting law. Um, and the open meeting law requires that all meetings be open and available to the public. That used to mean that you needed to physically convene, but obviously that's not um, at this point, still required, um, at least for now. And um, but um, and there needs to be a quorum. And so those meetings need to be posted in advance, 48 hours in advance, with an agenda attached to them. And uh, um, and absent that, you cannot meet. A quorum of this body cannot meet unless there is a posted notice. Um, <clears throat> and so. Uh, the, the notice part will be taken care of, I assume, for you, so you don't have to worry about that, but, you know, the, 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 uh, a meeting can happen in other ways. So a, a serial conversation among 
quorum of this committee would constitute a meeting outside of the public. So you cannot communicate with a quorum of this committee, which is six outside of a meeting. So, uh, and that includes serial communication. So if two people speak and then one of those people speaks to a few more people and one of those speaks to a few more people, you've now had an open meeting law violation. So you have to be very circumscribed in how you speak about this committee's business outside of a, a posted public meeting, okay? The other trap that, that committees such as this, and I, I don't think this would happen here because you've got some experienced people like the counselors and I know Bill's been on uh, committees before and understands this, but the committee could break out into subcommittees, one or more subcommittees. And those subcommittees are uh, subject to exact same old meeting law rules as the parent committee is subject to. So if some, three of you are assigned to go research something and report back to the to the whole committee on a subject that is a committee of three which means no two of you can speak outside of a meeting because two is a quorum so if you're in a three-person subcommittee you cannot speak to anybody else on this committee outside of a posted meeting of the subcommittee okay there's Yes. Um, I just want a, a, a question for you. So um, because this is sort of a unique um, commission, it strikes me that we are much less of a decision making um, uh, commission um, and much more of a learning, listening uh, panel kind of uh, our work is going to be. Um, the open, your um, instructions, advice about um, about meetings, is that limited to agenda items that we have to make decisions on? Um, anything, anything that's within the jurisdiction of this committee. So anything that foreseeably could come up in this committee is within the jurisdiction of this committee, within the scope is uh, that the committee is making recommendations or not making any decisions about anything for the city. The public has the right to know what you're doing and how it's getting done. And, um, you know, and so this is just fundamental open government. May I, may I speak? Um, sure. Oh, am I? Oh, okay. I, mean, sure, I, I don't, sure. I don't, I'm just trying to follow court. I'm just trying to follow rules, rules and yes. regulations. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, is this going to be, will we have this information in writing so that we, we can assure ourselves that we're not in violation of these things? Because this, for me, it's just new information. I'm sure I can learn yes. it, but it would be really helpful. Great. I, I'll make sure you do, but you should get a packet. You should or should have gotten a packet, I believe, from the clerk's office. I believe meeting law, public records, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, so you should get something in writing, and if you're not, somebody needs to let me know, and I'll make sure it happens. Okay. Bill? I would like to know whether you would recommend any subcommittee having a specific number of people, because if it's a quorum of the subcommittee and it's three, that means two cannot meet because that's a quorum. But if it's four, then you need three, and a subcommittee could conduct its business, which it seems to me is important because a lot of what we are going to accomplish is going to be accomplished by communicating subject to the open meeting law outside of the meetings. So in that situation, two, two of the four can speak together, two, and the other two can speak together, but, but the, the two pairings cannot intersect in any way because that would be a violation of the meeting law. The problem you run into with four is that you can you can have a two-two tie. And so, you know, I have always encouraged even number committees. So you would probably go to five, which would also be a three quorum. Um, and it, am I recalling correctly that discussions about um, scheduling and that kind of thing, that does not, that does not violate open right. meetings. So, so 
Um, I, I was getting there, Marissa. I was getting there. But, <laughs> no, that's but fine. Go ahead. Great segue. Perfect segue. So the things that are not prohibited um, are from uh, from communication, uh, particularly by email or other uh, you know electronic means, are things like scheduling, um, sending around documents that are to be uh, considered at the next meeting but I'm cautioning, do not reply all. That is the first sin of, of the open meeting law is to reply all to something that is sent to the entire committee. So um, you could send around something that is for the agenda or you would like for to be considered as part of an agenda item uh, for the next meeting, uh, but you cannot, you, you should, um, caution not to reply all when you're doing that and and this is a little difficult because most committees you know like the, the city council would have somebody through whom all things could be sent so you would send it to the assistant and then he or she would send it out and caution all not to reply all but when you reply all you have then um and commented on anything that was attached you violated the open meeting law because you've communicated on a matter that's before the committee to a quorum of the committee outside of a meeting. So um, I, I would just caution um, that those are allowed, but just to be, again, circumspect about the communicating around those issues outside of the meeting. May I ask yes. a question? Yes. Um, so if there's five of us, five of us. And if two and two of us meet, do can we meet in private? Yes. Okay. Two, that's what you know, a non quorum can meet in private. They can converse in private, but the third cannot. So if we wanted to do a retreat or something like that, how that would have to be public? Yes, you cannot do a private retreat if you're going to be talking about um, committee business, and you know I, I, it's, it'd be very difficult not to be talking about committee business, even if it's about how the business is going to be conducted, not even about the substance of the business. You know, just the, the public just has the right to know. Felicia, did you have? Another question? No, I just have to excuse myself. So I was just saying goodbye because I didn't okay. want to chat. And I, I look forward to working with all of you. And I apologize in advance. This okay. is work related. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. So um, so that's the, the open meeting law. The com Oh, Bill, do you have something? I, I would like to ask a question because I think the question of a retreat triggers this issue. And I think that uh, confidence in each other and trust in each other and assumption of goodwill is all really important to making this endeavor work. Um, and I'd like to know, would it be possible to have a retreat if we didn't discuss the actual business of the committee? We talked about ourselves and getting to know each other and the like, would that be okay? Can I get back to you on that? That's not something I want to answer off the cuff. I'll, I'll get back. I'll, I'll, there, there have to be rulings on it, and I don't want to answer that off the cuff because, you know, I, I trust they actually do that, but um, opening that door is not is is a, a big step. And I understand the concern, but it's a big step. So. That one's not off the cuff. So the companion to uh, to the open meeting law is the public records law. Any document that you make or receive as a member of this committee is presumed to be a public record that is available to the public upon request. 
So uh, we get public records requests all the time uh, for different documents. And you shouldn't be surprised if at some point somebody is asking for the documents that this committee uh, has either considered or generated. So anytime you generate or receive a document related to your business, uh, it needs to be uh, on this committee. It needs to be preserved. Um, your emails are public records. Your emails among each other are all public records. So that if anybody wants to see what communications you've had with other members of this committee, um, you're going to have to produce them. Um, you know, I generally recommend for stand those who are on standing committees that they get a separate email address for their public business just to make it easy to have your public emails separated from your private emails in case anyone ever asks for your emails. Um, neither I nor the Secretary of State's office is generally going to ask to look through your emails um, unless they have some reason to believe you're hiding something or not being forthcoming, uh, which I don't expect from anybody in this committee, but it's just, uh, and, and I'm not really suggesting that because, you know, unless you're, you're concerned about it, but that is an option just to create a separate email account to use for this committee and have all of your public emails separate from your private emails um, because they are subject to public inspection upon request and you have to produce them okay um, texts same thing people think that you know they're immune when they when they text and i'm sure bill and marissa can tell you they've had careers full of people who've sent texts thinking nobody's ever going to read their text they're all public records okay so um you know, as as I used to say to my kids, if you don't want to see it on the front page of the Gazette, don't send it because it's public. All right, and that's that's uh, um, and the and the final thing that I come to talk to you about is the conflict of interest law. Uh, I you know this is not the kind of committee that will really generate a lot of conflict of interests, but let me just say that if by some dint of fate you or one of your immediate family members has a financial interest in anything you're doing on this committee, please call me um, before you do anything that affects the finan your financial interests or those of your immediate family. If you hold a contract with, this, with, the, uh, with the city outside of your work here, please let me know. Um, uh, if you're... Um, if you have any questions, if ever you wonder whether your personal uh, interests are creeping into your decision making as a committee member, please let me know. Um, and you know, if anybody is coming before this committee who enjoys your favor or your disdain for any reason, and you can't be objective as to what they're saying. Uh, for some reason, please let me know. I'll, uh, you always have a right to contact me if you think there might be a conflict of interest. So don't hesitate because you don't want to get uh, yourself involved with the, with the State Ethics Commission because they issue fines and that's what they do. And so I'm here to help you with all of these topics. So if you have any question about an open meeting law question, a, a records question, or a conflict of interest question, um, you should reach out to me. Any question about any of that? Because I'd like to let you get on with your meeting. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the, serving on this committee and doing this work. And uh, I look forward to hearing uh, how it goes forward. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Attorney Seawall. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's round two sheets. I like a. Sorry, somebody's telling me something about dinner. <laughs> um, very good. Thank you, Attorney Seawald. Um, I, um, okay. So now um, we get to get to some business. Um, and this part of it, um, I, it's, it's a little bit free form. I know everybody just heard like a very, like, this is public meeting and this is, this is this and 
first of all, if, for those of you who haven't done something like this, don't freak out. Attorney Seawald has a way of talking about these things in a way that sounds makes it sound scarier than it is. Um, and uh, he's he, he, when he says call him, he he means it. He is uh, he is a great resource, and he always returns calls. He, he does not want to see anybody uh, uh, wondering if what they're doing is is or isn't the right thing, and and is always happy to answer questions. That said, I. I'm, I, you know, I think that uh, uh, council and committees and things um, that deal with licenses and people getting money and, and, and things like that, which there may be some of that down the road um, um, that we may be making recommendations. But um, I think, you know, for the most part, we can just focus on deciding what we want this to look like and making that happen, and uh, and that we're you're, you know we're we're not going to run into these things. But don't take any chances. If any if you have any question, don't hesitate to talk to Attorney Seawald about it. Bill, you look like you're trying to say something. Oh, you're just looking very intent. Um, so I'm a little disappointed with the number of people we have here to move on to picking a chair. Which we we can do. Um, does anybody have any thoughts about about that? Well, assuming that we're going to send another email out about a next meeting, uh, we can make a note that it's really a priority that everyone attend because we expect to choose um, a, a chair at the time. Okay. Um, I don't have an issue with that. We can table it, um, for the, the next meeting. Um, let's do this. Let's, um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the meeting going schedule going forward. I, th I think as an initial, um, as an initial sort of starting point that we ought to think about, um, at least once monthly meetings. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to, to pick like a, first Tuesday of the month or second Tuesday, you know, something like that. Um, and, and just stick with it and give it and put it out there. And, and if we find that somebody has a, a continuous, you know, a continuing conflict that maybe we can readdress it, but it, it put something on the calendar and, and let's move on with our, our planning. Um, you guys are all so quiet. <laughs> Well, I will say that uh, two, Mondays or Tuesdays work for me. Uh, the rest of the week, I will be at work. And it's, while I can step up in the office, it, it'll be much easier for me to do this on a Monday or Tuesday. So, uh, Yes, Bill. We're meeting uh, once a month, you said? And that's my suggestion to start off with. Um, but I, but for our meetings, for our, for our meetings, we'll come back to some other thoughts I have. Um, Bill? Yeah, it's, I have a question about the meeting uh, and this meeting, which is, are we governed by uh, the formality of Robert's rules of order? I mean, is do we have to follow certain rules to do any of that stuff, or we can just talk to each other? I mean, whoever is, whoever's chair, which is not going to be a counselor, you know, can certainly um, conduct the meetings however they say see fit as a as a general matter um council committees are are running a little less formally these days but where we have decision agenda items and decisions to make you know we do put forward motions and and you know try to try to keep things uh on track with discussions and then calling for votes um but we're running committee meetings a little less formally but but yes i mean when we have things to decide we we, we should try to you know, just follow some, some, some proper, pr proper form. And, and while we're on the subject of meetings, um, I'd like to know if we're going to discuss tonight or put this off as well till the next one, how long our meetings are going to be, how long the public speak time will be, how much will be devoted to that, and so on. So if you or Garrick uh, could speak to that, I'd appreciate it. Um, I have that down as uh, within to talking about meeting format and some some thoughts about that. So yes, we're definitely going to talk about that. Um, Rachel, Rachel. Yeah, I would. I 
really think that evenings are going to be best for many of us. So I like the idea that that was that, that this is at this time or, you know, six or seven. Um, but I think many people have conflicts during the day. I think that is true. And um, also the public's ability to get to meetings uh, goes up dramatically when we are in the evenings. So I, I agree. I would, I would, um, Garrick and I have um, community resources meetings, um, and I also have legislative matters meetings on Mondays. Um, so could we start with the suggestion of Tuesdays, like the second, third Tuesday, third Tuesday, third Tuesday of every month? I can't, I can't do two, third Tuesday of the month. I think uh, Ms. Kressler or Kressler, had all of our schedules and she was trying to put together well we were just trying to get the first one scheduled <laughs> uh, oh, okay. which is how we ended up here um so are tuesdays generally bad for you or um the third tuesday of the month is not good but um i could do tuesdays other than that okay first tuesday five five thirty um i'd prefer five so that we can yeah i would yeah. prefer four because five we're getting into the dinner hour yeah uh, that's the reason i prefer five because that's it's, it's just early as um could people do as early as four or four thirty i could I could try to make it four thirty. I think five would be, just be most comfortable for me. So, like well, five to eight, is that what you mean? I would hope. Well, so to get, we'll come back to this for Bill's question. My hope would be that meetings that meetings would not um, would not be that long. Um, I know many of you are maybe recalling the contentious uh, police reform commission meetings and how those went on for a long time. I don't think this is going to be like that. And I also, um, to circle back around, I have some thoughts and want to hear what other people think about how we uh, might might structure this within sort of what we do. Um, uh, that that would make at least the meetings not necessarily so so long. Um, so. If I'm hearing, um, well, why don't we, why don't I just put it to a vote? Um, so Tuesday, the first Tuesday sounds good. Um, who would uh, vote for 4.30? Okay, so we have Marsha. Um, and for five o'clock? I think five. Okay. Um, well, uh, my only concern is we, we're, this is our first meeting. We tried five o'clock and a lot of people are not here, so. So right, I I think once we get the schedule set, that folks will get it on their calendar and and be able to plan. Part of what was tough about this was the kind of like ad hoc. We got to get together, we got to get this first one going. Um, but 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 if but we got to start somewhere. We got to start somewhere in terms of, of getting a meeting on a uh, schedule on the on the schedule. At six o'clock. That really gets difficult for for. Well, I, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but that gets into kiddo time for me. Yeah, care. Yeah, I I think that five. Let's start initially at five, and once we have a chair, we can really return and see uh, if we need to adjust this. But yeah, five feels. For me, good enough if I can get my kids to their after school stuff, make it, you know, before main dinner time. So this way. Right. Um, I okay, so for right now, we're gonna say five o'clock first Tuesdays. Um, the uh once we get the chair established, um, we uh uh we can all we can always revisit it if if the if it seems like it's not working for too many people. Um, we, um, I want to get back to, um, I want to get back to, to Bill's question about 
Well, I would actually, let me do this. I would like to open it up to you guys because uh, I feel like I'm talking too much. Um, and I'm really just trying to get things organized to get started and then I can get out of the way and listen. Um, why don't we open it up to, I would like to hear what people think uh, about how you imagine this could go and and with the specifically questions of if we have so we have meetings what are we doing in meetings and what things outside of meetings are we doing because i kind of think of meetings as the planning part and deciding things and then maybe uh, a focus on panels and forums for the learning part and and that looks a little different. And then um, and then what what do we want to see come out of this at, as as a end product? Nothing we're married to today, but what are we? What do we think? Where do we think we're going with this? So I'm going to open it up to that discussion. Well, one of the, I just want to I'll hop in. I just want to hop in and say that actually, since uh, uh, um, Alan Sewell brought up. The committee keeps saying committee. I was in the impression commissions are not the same thing as committees. And so suddenly I'm like, wait, are we a committee? Are we a commission? You know, so for me, let me tell you why I say that. For me, a commission investigates, looks into things, finds things, presents a report, very specific as opposed to the committees, which, you know, is something that's more general that we have tons of committees for all sorts of things. And so for me, you know, you think about the outcome. I mean, 18 months is what I remember we talked about, Garrett for some sort of thing public people will see in the public which you know to to interact with and think and ponder about the the questions raised you know and, and all the material people put together so you know yeah the the commission has that you know not authority but its role as opposed to planning and solving problems and the committee to deal with transportation deals with, you know it's like it's a commission we're open to people talking to us we're thinking of things we're researching and you know to me it's not the same thing as a committee at all but right. i agree and it's a commission <laughs> so i'm in um sorry right, and we're kind of oh sorry i'm so sorry I, sir. i'd like to go ahead yeah thanks um right so it seems to me that the end product is a report that's what we've been asked to do that's the, that's the primary charge and i think that since that's our goal everything should be planned in relation to it um, I think the second part of it, as Mar uh, Marissa has mentioned, is to have an open com community um, aspect to it. So um, have some method of planning um, forums at multiple junctures of our progress. And I believe there are groups like the NRC that are willing to step up and do a lot of that planning to facilitate those uh, forums. And that would take a lot of the load off of us. And we should think of um, that group and Forbes as partners to do the sort of planning for the event and we show up as the speakers or the listeners for that for those events. But our primary interest should be producing a report that uh, creates a timeline of historical conditions and harms so surrounding Black people, the present condition and harm surrounding Black people, and a narrative of recommendations for redress. Um, I think another goal should be to create some kind of community survey or questionnaire that can be presented or open to Black folks to um, uh, fill out. And those are our big three things, right? The public part, uh, the questionnaire, and the report that will um, engage these three aspects, the, his the historical part, the present day part, and the narrative for recommendations. Um, that seems to be what we're all signed up for. Um, and, and then we, of course, have to divide our, our, our time and attention to figure out who's going to take on each of those aspects and uh, put it on the timeline, figure out how to do that uh, within this 18 month um, charge that we've been given. So one thing that I'm noticing is that we're talking about different things. Sarah's moving right to like, let's figure out how to how to get this done. Marissa, you asked us to do some visioning <laughs> questions and I'm like, okay, this is exactly how people jump out in the beginning of meetings and we just keep crossing paths. So I, I think today would be better. And uh, Sarah, I agree with what you said. And Marissa, I think visioning is important. 
that we have a sense of where we're going together and that we know that we have to create a document. But I think uh, the lawyer said some things to us that we need. One, we've got no packet that should have been sent to us. There's some basic things we need to put in place before we jump to let's start doing this or that. Um, because I feel like we don't have the background materials in hand. I don't. And um, I also would like to get a copy of what that charge is because that with the, with the information that the lawyer asked for and review that before we go jumping ahead and then also figure out why is the rest of our group not here, of our commission not here. And I think the question of being a commission versus a committee makes me think that Robert's Rules of Order and all this stuff, that's a committee's way of communicating. That's not a commission's way of communicating. Like we're already setting up this box that feels like, wait a minute, um, let's go back to the charge, let's get clear. And I think we need to meet in person. This is, I think for this meeting, this is good, but for the, us to really get started, I think that's critical. That, that's just me. No, thank you. Rachel? Yeah, I appreciate the comments of the last two people. And I wanted to say, in addition to the really good list that Sarah suggested, um, the idea of studying what other communities have done, such as Amherst and, and other communities who already have looked into reparations or racial harms, I think that should be part of it too. I think we'll be informed by those efforts. I, I just want to quickly mention, Marsha, um, I sent out an email early on when we were scheduling that has the charge in the resolution. Um, attached. So um, I encourage you to look at that that um, document because you'll be able to find the charge there. Um, and also yes. agree with what, what I was saying is, I think what a good committee does is in the beginning, you get the packet, it has everything in it together, which is what I think the lawyer was saying. He was even saying, if you don't have this information, let me know. That's, that's right. Well, I I'm sorry, Marsha, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, but I, I can't, that packet is is not um, specific to this um, to this commission. Um, it, is, uh, it is just some, some general information um, laying out in more detail the things he talked about, about the open meeting law. It's, um, we will make sure you get that, but it's, um, and, and you need to know it, but it's not, um, it doesn't pertain to this commission's work specifically. It's just more general rules of the road for on any, if you're on any kind of uh, commission. Okay. So, um, but we will make sure that, that we, we have that. Um, Bill? Yeah, I, one thing I would like to ask for is a suggested reading list. I'd put on the top of it, uh, Amherst's uh, report, which I think is imminent if it hasn't been released yet. Um, I'd really like to know what Amherst is, has, has figured out. I, I have uh, uh, interviewed Amilcar Shabazz on my radio show a number of times about the Amherst reparations program. Um, and I really, really am anxious to read what that report says. But I'd like to know what other people think would be good reading to do that would be helpful. And to the extent that helps inform us and gives us a uh, common denominator of facts or historical understanding, I think would be useful. Um, and we have a number of people here associated with academic institutions of higher education, who I think would be very helpful in that regard. Um. I um, I I want to echo that, and I actually think a thing that we can do right off the bat um, is uh, is make available. Um, and I'm, I imagine we can the city can find some place for us to post it, um, a library, a resource page, um, so people know what we're looking at. And it really doesn't have to be more than a reading list. 
Um, but I, I think we can, uh, the, the, we can ask the city to give us a little uh, internet real estate um, um, for that. And I think that they would, that's something we could get started with right away. Sarah. And what makes it kind of easy for us, I think now we're talking about university stuff is I think, you know, we should put together a syllabus, right? So we have 18 months. The first 12 months is our work time. We have to report out to the city. And then this, the mayor has given us an additional six months after we report out that initial, initial report that we could go back and revise um, after we've heard from um, the city and their response. So we have we only have 12 meetings, right? To get that done because we're meeting once a month and then we'll have another six meetings. Um, and I think when we, we think about it like that, we can, and I'm happy to, uh, to propose this um, and share this um, for our upcoming meeting uh, that we, we put together a syllabus and start filling in the blanks because it's only 12 meetings and that's gonna go by so fast, just like a semester goes by super fast. You know, uh, we, we have 14 weeks um, before our semester ends. So um, I think if we think about it in that way, we, we get a sense that if we're doing readings, that's probably a lot of that's going to have to come really quickly up front, like right in our, you know, as we prepare for our next meeting, we'll have to get that done, come to an agreement on our language. Are we going to use the language of redress from now on or the language of reparations? I propose that we um, switch to redress to get away from some of the legalities that might crop up with using the term reparations. Um, for example, and I'm happy to share some content on that, but come to an agreement on how we're gonna use our language. We've, we've used quite a few different versions of this title of our own commission. I think we should settle on one concrete title for our um, commission um, and, and then start to divide work and, and figure out where our labor can be most productive as individuals. Like, so who can do what best? Um, Cause again, 12 weeks are gonna like just 12 months are, is, is really gonna fly by. Rachel. Yeah, when you say 12 meetings that fills me with terror because that that's very little. I doubt very much that the Amherst folks met 12 times. I, so I think that we at least need to be open to the idea that at a certain point, we might want to start meeting every other week or dividing up into subgroups. But um, I can't imagine us getting all of this done in 12 meetings. Um, I, I agree with that. I, 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 the other thing that I, I think that I, I see happening is that meetings are not going to be necessarily the, um, the it, it's where we, uh, do our work, but that I, I think there will, I think the thing that will be additional is not maybe not meeting more meetings, but, um, planning of public forums and panels, um, that, uh, and that does strike me as, as something that subcommittee work, <laughs> uh, would, that sub subcommittees might, um, be well suited to do that. Maybe we could divide up into to subcommittees to, prepare panels or forums on certain subjects as we go along um, so that everybody's not hashing out every issue, but that we're pulling together for things that are, you know, uh, you know, speak to us or to divide up the work. Garrett? Oh, Osman, sorry. Yeah, no, I was going to say two things. First, um, just to go backwards, Marissa, um, I'm in the process of, I'm teaching a course on reparations this fall. Um, and so I am in the thick of, of resources and, and trying to make those painful decisions about how much my students can actually read in the semester because it's a massive topic. Um, so Sarah, any books, you any suggestions sooner than later would be great to send my way <laughs> um, as I'm thinking about these first year students. I, got, I have graduate students in Holocaust and genocide studies in my course and also first year students. So as you can imagine, it is a, a broad and diverse group of, 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 of thinkers. Um, but but I'll, you know, once I get this thing done, which my first class is on Monday, 
obviously, Bill, I'll share my readings of sub list and all the work I've been doing trying to put this class together, people. Um, but but you know, as as Sarah maybe even suggested, it's a it's a large topic. Um, and even just doing African Americans and reparations is a large topic. And so uh yeah, I'm sure there'll be many, many more resources, but you know, we don't want to get tied into just doing the academic thing. So, you know, we can read a lot. There's a lot to be read, but you know, at the same time, you know, we need to, we need to move forward stuff. So anyway, I just want to mention that, but yeah, Jarrett, Garrett, right. Yeah. Garrick. I'm not unmuted. You're muted. Oh, there you go. I, I can figure this out. It's not my first rodeo. Um, so I, I feel the same kind of tension or nervousness about oh, there's only 12 meetings. And I just wanted to say that my experience in the select committee to study barriers to service, uh, the way that we set it up, because again, it was a mix. There was two counselors and then um, two people who had been on committees before and then people who were who have never done it. So we had a, a wide range, which is very much like this. Uh, what we did is we front loaded uh, the start of the, the committee with a you know back-to-back -back meeting. So we did uh, two meetings in a month you know, for the first two months, just to a allow for people who couldn't come, but also to to discuss and figure out our structure. And then we broke up and did stuff. And then as we got closer to having, uh, we did some forums to hear from people who had either uh, been a part of committees, people who hadn't been. So as we got closer to those things, then we went back to a more meeting structure. So I just wanted to say that there is some flexibility in this, and and maybe we could uh, take. A little bit of guidance from that and, and maybe do two meetings next month you know one for our initial like just being honest i think we're going to have to have an introduction to everyone again um you know when everyone's there so I agree. um mm -hmm. you know we're going to want agree, to have yeah. one meeting that is introductions pick our chairs you know figure out where we want to go and then the second one is where we get into our nitty-gritty and try and break up and, and really get into the meat of it so um, Bill, I see your uh, hand is up, but I, I just want to say one thing um, to that. So the first Tuesday, the next first Tuesday that's coming up is actually not, not even uh, not even two weeks away on the 5th. It's the day after people come back from the holiday. But um, I, I would start with suggestion that that's the, the, the next meeting that we put on, on the calendar. Um, Bill? I, I would just like to suggest with regard to meetings, that our meetings be essentially decision-making meetings about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so for example, I think that for our next meeting, we should spend some time uh, on what the city council charge is exactly, um, because I went back and reread it and it talks about, it directs actually uh, that we consider uh, residents, employees, and students. And that's those are those are categories that the city council has directed. I would like to have some clarity on is that it? I mean, could would visitors to the city be considered or not? And I see Sarah shaking her head saying the answer is no. So um but I think that's that is of some significance, and I think it's a significant how we're going to uh, uh, address those those three identified universes of people, and whether we have feelings about which which group we think needs to be considered uh, first, or whether we have feelings about that, whether we need that we we'll have an obligation to look into students and employees as well as residents. Um, and when we're doing that, I would I was very moved by the part of the uh, uh, council resolution, or I guess it's an ordinance, uh, Garrick and Marissa, that says, look what happened to the once upon a time significant black population in Northampton and what happened to those people. And with those with those people and the generations that came after, from those individuals who left Northampton, um, would they be eligible? I mean, there are a lot of issues here, I think, about who it is we're trying to focus on with regard to reparations, uh, restitution, reparative justice, whatever the phrases we're ultimately going to talk about or utilize. 
Marcia. Um, okay, let me just get a clarifying thing done here. Do we have, uh, we're making all these suggestions. Is anybody taking any of this down? I am. I'm a note, a note taker by birth, really. Like, it's my okay. Blood. Excellent, thank so, you. And um, yes, I'm sorry. Can I go, go ahead. Um, I think that it would be really great if we could see what's being noted, because I have no idea out of all the suggestions and all that, what was written down um, of it. So we don't know. We just have two people saying they're taking notes. Um, do we have an administrative person that's going to be working with us? Um, and when will that person come on board? Because I think it would be good to have the whiteboard and that person doing that so we can see what's going on. Um, that And I'm with, is it Bill? Anon? Anon? Bill? Um, that we go slow to go fast. We're already down the road. Let's stop, take a step back and reread that directive together. I mean, because already we were talking about being a committee, but we're a commission. So I just think we need to take a step back and do some work and meet in person. So we meet each other and not, the, I love Zoom because it gets a lot of things done, but we do need that initial meeting because we need to build relationship. The, these issues are not easy issues. Absolutely. Sarah, is your hand up anew? It is. Okay. Uh, I do want to offer that I, I drafted um, a job post for this staff person, and I'm happy to, to share it around. I, I think that what we need is a community document, which is tough because I, so I'm going to email Alan because usually groups like this outside of maybe the min municipality would use like a Google doc, right? So we could get oh, we everything in one place so that everybody, <laughs> exactly, right? But we can send as individuals emails with single documents to the whole group, which is what he said. So uh, yeah. if I took minutes, for example, which I'm doing, right? I can just send the whole document to everyone, but you guys could not reply to, to the whole group to discuss it we'd have to wait until our next meeting. Is that right, Marissa? That's correct. I, yeah, I just want to address two things. So me, minutes, um, thank you, because I meant to ask if somebody would take uh, to take notes. Um, actually, we will be always um, uh, um, having and distributing minutes from the previous meeting um, for approval and public posting. So Marsha, that's just going to be part of our process. Um, um, and uh, the... As far as um, when we get to the part of, and I know Marcia is like, don't go, don't go so far ahead yet. But when we get to the part where we're actually, um, edit, you know, writing and producing something, we'll talk then about the process so that we we divide up the work in ways that don't violate open meeting laws, so that we can, um, you know, collaborate and then bring things back together. Um, then that we, uh, you know, that we we pull together for for comment. For every with everybody, we can we can work on things. It, we can work on things collaboratively in open meeting, and and we can ask for uh, Attorney Seawall for clarification. But we also can um, we can also work on things collaboratively. But it is it is perhaps maybe that we keep a working document. I don't know. We'll have to see. But like the the problem is the public gets to know, and until and if we're not where it's ready for the public to know because it's not finished, then we have to, to, to be mindful of, of the rules. Um, I, yeah, Garrett. Just, just quickly, because we're talking about this, is that, so I had talked to Laura, who's our administrative assistant for the city council. Um, and she had said that uh, one thing that helped her when she came on board with the city council was that they had recorded the meetings and then she she transcribed them. So the person that we hire as our administrative assistant will we are recording this now and they will transcribe word for word all the things that are be saying. So it won't just be notes taken. Um, so that will happen with every meeting. Um, one thing that we should also discuss, it doesn't have to be in this meeting, but maybe the next, is what else we would like our administrative assistant to do um, in terms of, obviously, they're going to help 
um, to post our meetings timely so that we can actually have a meeting because that's the law. Um, but we also can figure out where else this administrative assistant can help, whether it is organizing our subcommittees um, along with the chairs and whatnot. So we will have that support um, and we will all have that information at our ready. Yeah, Sarah. Unfortunately, we didn't take advantage of the transcription process that is already built into Zoom. I just started it. Oh, now. no, somebody did. Somebody did. Oh, I saw it go up earlier. Oh, someone started early. So the one I just started um, gives us an option to save the transcript. So if so, did someone start it earlier? I thought I did, and I may have messed up. This, this is my first first time at this part. So um, no worries. Uh, but you but I thought it was recording it or something, right? Yes. Um, I thought I saw the transcription thing go notice go by. I saw uh, the closed captioning notice at the beginning, and now so I'm. I'm not sure they're the same thing. Right. I, I don't, I personally don't think it's the same thing. I think that one per, a person has to click on the transcription option, which I just did. And it's now it's populating a transcription and then I can save that. But I don't see how I can go back and find the other transcription that someone else might have prompted. So we'll just have to try to remember that. Like at the beginning of every meeting, someone has to start a transcription. And that and would can, be the administrative assistant. Is there what, <laughs> yeah. what was that that should hopefully be the administrative assistant yes yes <laughs> that would be great all right and also this is recorded so we may be able to start you know so, somebody may be able to to go back to the recording and get the whole thing transcribed um okay so so we talked about the administrator we've talked about schedule we've Begun, begun to feel out what we we think this might look like um and i very very much don't want to pass the gavel on um i feel like we shouldn't do that tonight um but um but we will put out a notice for the for the for the next meeting um uh for the next meeting how are you all uh, hired? To be the fifth. Say again, Marsha? How did you all hire the administrative assistant or is that not done yet? No, that's not done. Um the you so Sarah, you have already written up uh let's have a quick discussion about what we think that that admin. Can you tell us a little more about what what you've proposed and we can talk about if that's the appropriate person so we can get that rolling sure um and according to alan i can show you something as long as i send it out to you is that correct so i can share my screen and show you this job post as long as i just send it out to you guys as well is that yeah, right Yeah, and the meeting's recorded so in that context that'll also be um um publicly available too so I'm going to uh, just can't send it in the chat. Host disabled participant screen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But if I say it, it'll it'll populate in the transcription. So here you go. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I'm a co-host now. Okay. There you go. So you should be able to share screen. Okay, great. So we seek a part-time staff member to maintain commission records and conduct research as directed by commissioners, city councilors, and members of the mayor's office. The commission seeks a researcher who can work with document editing suites to produce documents, spreadsheets, and forms. The applicant should have strong written and verbal communication skills and be attentive to detail and accuracy. This position requires one to regularly retrieve and organize dense numerical information from numerous sources. Applicants must provide a sample of work illustrative of these skills. And then I have a short list of general expectations, uh, attending meetings, create transcriptions of meeting dis discussions, disseminate minutes to commissioners, 
access and compile demographic data organized across time and location, and then access and compile municipal records pertaining to residential, commercial, and other fields of data. Let's see. And so the question will be, uh, what should I just add here? What comes to mind to you now that I can add to this document? One, one thing we talked about earlier is posting meetings in a timely fashion. I don't think that's included in your list. Yeah, I'd put that in the first bullet point or you could, or, you know, um, uh, post, um, Minutes and agenda, minutes and agenda within the requirements of open meeting laws. And that would include getting it on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'd also say, um, I wouldn't say attend meetings, um, uh, facilitate uh, meetings. I'd say right. facilitate to we'll, encompass. You have to take the role as well. And... Yeah, there's there's some sort of administrative meeting things. Um, so it's part of their job descriptions, they have to attend all of the meetings, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think we should be clear about that. Facilitate and attend all. Yeah. Working sessions, or however we're going to call it, of the commission. All, even subcommittee me me meetings. Uh, not so subcommittee all, meetings. All no, all meetings. workings. Yeah, the wall what of our working sessions. I also think we need a certain kind of personality. Somebody who knows how to uh, collaborate and to. Because in facilitation, they need to be able to be collaborative and um, keep meetings moving, but making sure that people are involved in the process. I think that would be the chair or coaching. Or coaching. Yeah, I was going to say that seems, sounds more like what the chair. So this person is not going to like be in charge of what we're doing. They're going to assist. Oh, us. I, I, I understand that, but they're probably going to be on the phone trying to get information from us. And they need to have a certain kind of personality and style that is is uh, able to work with all different kinds. Because we're all different kinds of people. You know, where some of us are academics, some of us are business, some, you know, this is a, an eclectic group. I also had a question about the word facilitate because I think of that as the chair's job. Me too. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm specifically thinking of sort of the tech aspect of it. Um, even when we even when we meet in person, um, there's some we're, we're probably going to be meeting in a hybrid um, format, and so we need we need somebody. I'm, maybe I'm just being too about it, but the we need somebody to run the Zoom. Um, I, I would also add in um, assisting to schedule um, meetings as well. Because there's having, I've found in my time in the council and, and some of the select committees that having Laura to be there to help the chairs send out emails and, and, and right. connect yeah. with them is going to be great. So something around um, assisting with setting up and ensuring that meetings are uh, scheduled, uh, agendas are out, or uh, agendas are completed and uh, disseminated to all members, that kind of thing. Do you think it's a good idea for the for the chairperson to facilitate? Can, mm -hmm. can I hear more about why people think that's a good idea? Well, the chairs. I, I, I I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Well, I was going to say a chair is a person who generally just runs a meeting and um, will facilitate the uh, voting and decision making skills. So, for example, I used to be the Senate chair when I was an undergrad. So I understand voting processes that are based in Robert's Rules of Order. And really, anybody can go buy the little book and it'll tell you all about I have it on my bookshelf. It's a little cute little book. Um, who knows how to make motions, who's willing to call on people in order, um, keep up with time, um, that kind of thing. I think that's a normal thing to ask of a chair. I think you're, I think that's a great idea if we were running a a, a meeting that is uh This within the model that we're used to operating in. I think I would like to see us use a model. I was just um, researching uh, different kinds of models besides Robert's Rules of Order. I find Robert's Rules of Order to be very off-putting and it does not help people to collaborate and understand one another. It's about rolling over people. And I don't think in a, when we start talking about issues of people of color, I think that's something that is in direct opposition to the way we want to embrace and work with people. Um, it's a very white model. Um, I just don't think if we're talking about African-American people, we need to start to move toward ways of communicating that fit with our people, that's not. When I think about that, I don't think of Black people communicating that way. As a matter of fact, I think we really dislike it. <laughs> I, I have a comment too. I've avoided Robert's rules my whole life and I just as soon keep avoiding it. But I do think that a chair is a person who can kind of keep things on track I mean, a chair has to have some role and a, a chair in my mind does kind of get the meeting going, keep people on track, say we really need more time because we still have five things on the agenda. That's at least mm -hmm. what I'm used to. Okay, we, uh, let's, let's try it. My experience is chairs are usually involved in the content. And if you're involved in the content, you're gonna start to steer things the way you want it to be. So, you know, that's always a dance. A, a, a chair has to be really cognizant of that. And um, I just want to caution us that we're really setting up ways of communicating that are not in alignment with African-American people. I just want us to be very cautious about this. That's why I think we need to go slow. I think we need to visit the charter that um, Anon, or what's your name again? Bill um, suggested, because, you know, immediate, immediately look at what we're setting up. Look at the container we're putting this in. Well, I mean, in just to jump in. <laughs> it, you know, I'm just, I, that's it. I'm not going to say anymore. No, I, you know, actually, I think that uh, I'm glad you raised that question of the chair. I mean, you know, there's uh, there really is no reason why a different person could chair every meeting. You know, there's there's no reason why we have to stick to a traditional conventional chair role, which, of course, immediately I think to myself, having just chaired the Committee on Personnel, that that's the last thing I'll ever do in my entire life. So when you said be the chair, my immediate response, which I didn't say, which I was going to say, which is that I absolutely will not be the chair. But if I thought about it differently, as as was just suggested, and suddenly it becomes a role that is, you know, maybe, can you know, some meetings or you know, different than what I just experienced, which basically like 10 times as much workload as everybody else, I suddenly right. get more interested, right? If it's about facilitation, it's about, you know, coming together and 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 trying as best to, um, as opposed to brokering deals and emails and, you know, talking to department chairs and arguing over stuff, um, which is, you know, conventionally in a higher ed context, the way, you know, sort of a personnel committee chair ends up doing uh, or a department chair ends up doing. So thank you for raising it. Um, I think that uh, meetings can be efficient without chairs. I think that, that um, you know, it requires, as was suggested, slowness and not efficiency. It's necessarily according to certain sorts of efficiency, um, but certainly 
it's possible to function effectively without the conventional uh, Roberts Rules of Order or any sort of, of label as chair. Um, it's just that, as I suggested, with 12 to 18 meetings, uh, you know, it, without a chair, we're running, you know, clearly some of us see the potential impact of not having more structure um, and the fear that if we are charged to complete a task, that we will come to the end of 18 months and know each other well and know the idea as well, but not actually get to perhaps what we wanted. So those would be the fears I would have without having, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, more specific leadership, but I certainly am, am open to it. I still think we need a chair. I'm just saying, I don't know that we need to use Robert's rules of order and this kind of structure that doesn't really fit the way African-American people communicate. I don't think we like being rolled over. I think we're used to that. And I think we should try to not set that into motion. Um, I, I would just pipe in here to say that we as as a commission can can decide um, to conduct ourselves however however we want to. There's nothing with the city that says that we have to use Robert's Rules of Order. Um, there are some kinds of bodies that meet that it's it is a little helpful to have more structure. And I don't I don't see this uh, necessarily as one of them. We're, we're going to have some little business to do past you know um, approved meeting minutes and 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 schedules and and decisions to be made that there's there's some advantage to 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 being able to have just know how we do it um but i i i'm hopeful that there's going to be a lot of room for just for just for discussion that that's what's it's going to be um uh, so I would like to I would like to bring tonight in for a landing. Um, uh, and I, I don't want to say, Marsha, I'm also I'm I'm a little disappointed with the number of folks who are not here. I'm not sure why we didn't get responses. Um, we have worked pretty hard to put out a bunch of dates and get notice and some folks we didn't hear from. So we, we will be looking into that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm ready to get to the part where I, I learn and I listen. Um, I'm not, I'm not here about trying to run things. I'm just trying to get the meeting, get it off the ground. Um, I want to just address uh, this. So um, Sarah, my suggestion would be that, um, that, that, uh, that we, um, I would designate you, and if you want a, a partner, if you want Garrick or me to to uh, to communicate with you um, about how we convey um, a job description um, to the city, so that HR can get it out and get it posted. Um, I don't, I don't bureaucratically know how exactly how that happens, um, but I think if folks are in general. Uh, in general agreement that this is is the in who we're looking for. I'm also positive that HR is going to have some things to add to it, <laughs> um, and uh, so I would offer to work with you, um, or we could put you in touch with. Um, I see Garrick, maybe. I'm oh, sorry. I could. I would help as well. I mean. Okay. Um, so that we can get that uh, uh, up and and posted. I don't see a need to vote on this. Um, let's just get this forwarded to the to the city for posting and to get started on getting the job filled. Um, yeah, Sarah. I was going to say for for uh, the purposes of um, like the well being of the the folks who didn't get to meet with us today, um, and all the stuff that we have to eventually. Um, decide do as the kind of last hooray of our meeting do we want to just throw out questions that i can just type up that we feel like the the commission will have to answer going forward and they can really just be anything so it's kind of like a smorgasbord so people can start thinking about stuff um should we do that like just i mean uh did did we lose bill newman no he's no he's still there oh no no he's so i just don't see him on my list um I mean, yeah, so I was wondering, do we want to do that? Um, so, for example, Bill's question was, who counts as a part of this effort um, of studying racialized harms 
uh, will that include residents, employees, and students? And then the second part of his question was, how might we go about uh, uh, discerning what those issues of racialized harms have been in relationship to those groups? So that was one question. Um, does anyone else have a question that I could put down in my notes for everybody else? I, I have another question. Okay. Which is, which is much more directed towards the process that we're going to use. Um, this charge from the city council says, we want you to get, want you, the commission, to give us, the city council, a final report in 18 months. It also calls for a preliminary report in 12 months. Um, it is that preliminary report that is going to engender the most discussion among the public, and it's going to require the greatest amount, I assume, of uh, public speak time, either to a committee, a subcommittee of the commission, or a committee of the commission, or to the commission itself as a body. Um, I would like to propose that someone, at least after the next meeting, set up forth a proposed schedule for what we are what we are going to get done by when, because if we're ad libbing this we are never going to have a report due, uh, ready for, to deliver in 12 meetings. I am, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my reaction hand. Um, I just want to say that while these, the, the timeline is, is 12, 12, you know, 12 months for the preliminary and, and 18 for the whole thing, there's, I believe, nothing to stop us from asking for an extension. Uh, when I was on the select committee to study racialized, uh, I'm sorry, barriers to service, um, we found ourselves, due to a couple of technical difficulties, we had uh, as well um, issues getting a staff person with us. Uh, we had some meetings that were not posted in time. And so what we had to do was come forward to the city council and ask for an extension. So I don't want us to feel like we uh, have to put out substandard work because of this imposed timeline. Um, we're really here to to get to the meat of this, and I I don't want that you know nervousness to kind of cloud our judgment. So. I agree with that, and I um, sorry, Bill. Uh, I agree with that. Um, I, I I I would like to just from the perspective of us, us on council and knowing how that's going to go, reassure everybody that if we need more time and we have a reason, you know, a specific reason to ask for it. Um, we can do it. I also think we should establish a timeline that aspires to to meet the the goal, because um, otherwise, I've been on enough of things like this to, to know how they to know how they 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 can they can get bogged down upon themselves. Um, so I agree that that ought to be a agenda item for the next meeting. Um, so I, I um, there was one thing on the the shared thing that I just also wanted to mention to Sarah, but also we we have to um, so we definitely want notes and we and, and minutes and um, the whether or not we need transcripts of all the meetings. I mean, I would just suggest that we can decide for ourselves if we need that. My personal, my thought is that it might be overkill for general meetings. That things that we want transcripts of will be panels and forums and speakers and things like that. Um, that strikes me as helpful. Um, I just don't want anybody feeling uh, so in the job description, and then also anything you're doing for us tonight, Sarah. Until we get this person, <laughs> um, is that we need minutes. We don't. We don't. We don't need transcript um, for folks who are not here tonight. Um, we will be encouraging them to to what to watch the meeting and then they might be like oh my gosh what have i gotten into but um but the they that that is an option for them to, to watch the meeting that they missed uh and i don't want you sarah to feel like you need anybody needs to be creating a verbatim transcript of of this very good absolutely agreed <laughs> can we uh, add to the to the job description that we need somebody also who can write because we may need them to jump in and 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 uh, help create the report and edit and help edit too. 
I will, you know, that may be, um, I'm a little worried that that might be um, more than what we ought to expect of an administrative assistant. Um, and also speaking as. Uh, oh, I, I didn't realize we were hiring an administrative assistant. I thought we were hiring more of a, a, a professional, you know, another professional to to do this, it, not a, a not an administ not an admin. An admin, you know, I was thinking more of a graduate student, somebody who, you know, knows how to research and knows how to approach these things. Why would we want an admin? I I personally um I like the question. I'm happy you raised it. Um I think that the people who need to be on this commission as deciders and thinkers are on this commission. And I wouldn't say that some person hired after the fact should have authority over the intellectual production of what we do. We are the decision makers. We will create what gets written. And if they end up transcribing or dictating what we've asked them to dictate, that's one thing. But I personally don't like the idea of giving, giving this person that kind of authority. When we went through this process, we applied. We were appointed by the mayor. And so I think, I, I personally feel comfortable with writing stuff up. Usman is obviously a, a, a very talented writer. Garrick and Marissa, um, as well as Jamila did an excellent job with the, um, with the charge. And Bill is uh, obviously a, a professional of high quality. And I'm sure Rachel, with your background in libraries, you are too. I feel like we are competent enough. Oh, I, it's not because I can't write, hun. It's because uh, I'm concerned that we already see that we don't have a good, uh, like our group didn't show up. And I'm just concerned when, you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty and you're trying to crank stuff out, a lot of times people don't show up. So I'm just being realistic about that. Garrett. But, you know, it's fine if you don't want us a, a graduate level student, that's fine. I, I'm glad you, you brought up again the attendance, because uh, while uh, I'm a little disheartened, but I also want to state that uh, not everyone engages with email or whatnot. I'm not certain how we were all reached out to. It's like I personally texted Felicia uh, and, and she had no idea or, or wasn't. So I think part of this administrative person uh, just job is again to help schedule so that is you know following up after you send an email to send a text and and some of us are better you know my my email is crazy if you came over here it it really gives my partner anxiety if she sees how many on like it's it's insane mm -hmm. so i think that's something and much in the same way marsha and I, I was heartened by your discussion about going outside of robert's rules and and really thinking of this body as, as being different. And so I think our communication with the, ourselves needs to also follow that. So it also be different. Okay. So that, that, I, that I have to say I totally agree, Marsha. I, the it, part the the first step is getting everybody here and figuring out why they weren't. And then and then once we do that, we can see what works in terms of making sure everybody knows where they can see the meetings. And also we all know, you know, where wh how to meet people where they are in terms of 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 uh, communication and email. So, um, right. That's why I think the relationship building part of this is very important. People of color respond more to relationship building a lot of times than they do, you know, being written to and that kind of stuff. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like we need to build relationship with each other so we can keep each other together as we go through this process. And I, you know, I just feel like, yeah, we're, we're like, yeah, I agree with you, Garrett. We may have to send out text and not just emails. And so that's fine. Um, okay. Um, I, I would like to suggest this, um, you know, so that we, it, I would, I like to suggest this is that we get, uh, let Laura know, um, because she's the person right now who can post, um, about the meeting, um, the first Tuesday of September. Um, and I, Notwithstanding that we don't have, um, uh, I know we have things that we think about what how what how the chair is going to function, but we do we we we're required to have one um, at least you know for the purposes of uh, some amount of mo moving things along so we can tell the city who's who kind of the, that point person is. 
Um, and I, I truly, I don't want it to be me. That's not the role that I imagine for myself in this. Um, I'm talking too much and I'm uncomfortable already with that. Um, and uh, so we will have, uh, but I will work on an agenda for the, for the next meeting. Um, but the first thing um, that we'll do will be to um, uh, elect, an, uh, elect a chair. And um, and the agenda that I put together for that um, will be a, I mean, it'll be posted, we'll need to do it, it's going to be open-ended, um, so we'll have room for us to move within that discussion, um, but then to hand it off to, to, to whoever, whoever is, is, is going to uh, help us in that way. Um, and I'm all for an admin, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that people felt that it should be. I I was looking for a more skilled person than that, but if that's what the city wants, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I am hopeful we get somebody who offers some additional expertise uh, beyond <laughs> the basic admin. I'm hopeful we'll we'll find somebody who's committed to the work and interested in what we're doing, not just you know uh, pressing go on the Zoom. That's not who we're looking for. Well, that, I also think that could be a request that we find is that obviously we all can't do all the research and whatnot. So if we come to a point that we're like, we need a researcher, I feel like that is within our umbrella. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, that's a good point, Garrett. I, I think there will be opportunities that if we identify a particular need um, that we need help with, that's because we've taxed out our expertise or are there some specific project um that that the the city may be open there'll be some i think we'll have some creative ways to get those needs met um not just with it from not just from within the commission um okay i'm sorry this is i feel like this was scattered and a little bit but it, it was important for us to get yeah. get going <laughs> um and be able to say um and to say that we we met um, my promise to you is this, we'll get the next two, the next um, Tuesday meeting posted um, and we will be reaching out directly to everybody to make sure um, and not relying on the, the, the email uh, situation, the, the plague that is August summer <laughs> and everybody being on vacation uh, and reach out to everybody because uh, I you all didn't meet everybody. You know, some of you may not know the other folks are not here, but it's an incredible group of people that I'm positive that they want to be here, and that it's not. Uh, we're not. We're not looking at a situation where people aren't going to come through. Um, we just gotta all get on the same page. Okay. Does everybody feel like we we've done as much as we can do tonight, and, and we can all feel good about saying we at least yeah. got started. <laughs> If, a, if this is a council, and, and, oh, sorry, Marcia. Oh, Garrett can come back when he can talk. Right. Sorry, Marcia. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you froze. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, you know you all have done a lot of work, and I want to appreciate the work that you've done. And you know, Marissa, I think you've done a great job. Um, we're going to be coming from different point of views, and so it's kind of like herding cats and it's not easy. And, you know, you're in there trying to job. So I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and sometimes it's really, I just need to get dinner, you know, and, and we all <laughs> girls gotta eat. So, um, uh, oh, there was one more thing. Oh, um, the other thing too, I, do we have feelings about meeting in person versus, uh, I, I'm with you. I don't want to, I would prefer not to, to meet by Zoom unless we have to. We wanted to get things going today, but um, I, I would also just say we, we always will do hybrid. So if you can't be here um, and in person, we do, we have the technology to, uh, to, to do a, a, a meaningful hybrid that works well. We find it works well in council. Um, but, but my preference would be if we, we might have to find a space, but, um, uh, but if we can find a space to meet in person. Yes, Garrett. I was going to say that I, I do like meeting in person and I'd love to hang out with you guys, but it also, I think will require our administrative assistant to help set up the zoom and make it a true hybrid. Uh, situation 
So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, so. That's true. Uh, why don't we leave it at this? Um, we will have to get back to you about the next meeting, whether or not we can, we have this, the space because that uh, other, whether or not council chambers is available and where, where we can meet that has the technology. If, if, it, if we can find a space, we will do it in-person hybrid. Um, and, uh, and I will work with, you know, Garrick and I will work with Laura um, uh, if we need her help to facilitate the meeting. And in the meantime, we're gonna get the ball rolling on getting an admin hired. Whether, how quickly we get that person hired is a different question, but in the meantime, we'll, we'll do the extra work needed to, to help the city help us um, in, in terms of meeting. Um, okay. Anybody have any last questions? I, I have one. If we are uh, meeting on Zoom and we have this instruction from Alan Seawolf and you uh, to not use the chat, can we use the chat nonetheless to talk to an individual as opposed to the group? Because Zoom, of course, had... no. Yeah, no, I mean, I no. Um, in general, like texting um, or messaging during meetings is a little is a little bit dicey um, because um, not to get too technical about it, but like text being subject to open meeting law. I mean, you know, Bill, of course, that that is actually subject to parameters. Somebody can't just be like, I want all your texts from this this day. But, you know, text or, or direct messages between people like during a meeting um, are, will be subject to disclosure. Um, and the public records law. In, under public records law. So, so that's the reason I'd suggest not doing it. Um, the other thing too is individual on chat um, in the meetings um, is also subject to open meeting law. I mean, you can do it, but there's going to be a record of it. And uh, I'm assuming nobody's going to say anything untoward, but it's, in general, it's, it's, it's contrary to the, the, what I think Alan would say is it's contrary to open meeting principles. Sorry, we the lawyers went off into a place. Sorry, we didn't mean to. <laughs> um, okay, um, I uh, don't be afraid by what Alan said. We we certainly may communicate amongst ourselves um, and about meetings and what's coming up and things like that. Um, and 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 those of us who have experience with open meeting laws, if we think there's an issue, we'll we'll tell you, and you guys will all uh, be, you know, begin to get the hang of that. But, um, um, but I don't want y'all to be afraid of picking up the phone or writing the email or whatever. We're, we're, we're not in the territory where we can talk about getting things set and scheduled and get moving, um, as, as we need to, to get the job done. Okay. Um, all right. Well, if nobody else has any other questions, um, uh, say, so, I'm sorry, again, a motion to adjourn. Thank you. That's what I was hoping somebody would say. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. Marcia, are you seconding? Second. Okay. We have simultaneous multiple seconds. Um, I'll, I'll say uh, Marsha seconded it for the minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. At one roll, if we're all on uh, Zoom, we have to do a roll call vote um, for any vote we take. Uh, so, uh, Garrick. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Marsha. Yes. Bill. Yes. Uh, Ro uh, Rachel. Yes. Miss Main. Yes. And I also agree we should adjourn. So.